this is uh, getting the final few market days of July started here today, Monday, the 29th. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I am Busan Namafaye. Quite uh, hope you enjoy your weekend. Quite a lot on the table to start the week. If you look at Nigeria, where the stock market fell 1.95%, roughly 2%, uh, it's the biggest decline since the start of uh, the month of July for a single day. Taking the NSC, NGX, all share index diving below the 100, uh, 1000 level. Dangote Cement, Nigeria's biggest company in industrial manufacturing by market value, had more than a trillion naira shift off its uh, market uh, capitalization on Friday. It was a very brutal Friday as investors begin to digest uh, a cocktail of uh, uh, issues in Nigeria from the planned protests this week, scheduled for later this week on Thursday to the 50% or 70% windfall tax on FX for, for, for banks and the interest rate 50 basis point hike, which was done last Tuesday. So quite a whole lot coming left, right and center, buffeting the market, in a moment when I'm speaking, boxing investors to a corner as it were. So the market bucked very strongly on Friday. We've got a new week starting now and things are really a little bit on edge as we speak. In BRV, let's move on to Côte d'Ivoire. The composite index fell by 0.42%, plus a pullback. The Egyptian market uh, was uh, reported 0.459%, 29,208 this morning by Bloomberg, while the NSE in Nairobi saw the index fell sharply 1.28% Friday, and Johannesburg markets up by 0.55%. That's taking uh, the GSC OSHA index a little bit uh, higher above the 81,000 uh, level. Let's get the new week started. Who knows what the rest of the week will look like. But getting you started this Monday, these are the headlines east of the continent. Let's start with Ethiopia. President, Prime Minister Ahmed Abi announcing that the country's uh, burr has now been floated. It has to be market determined uh, uh, demand and supply. It's a free float for the currency. The whole idea is to use this latest move at the currency market, move all exchange controls and allow foreign investors to come in as a come as a country also now allows a foreign banks to come into the country they can get 40 percent here 60 percent here and they can be part of local banking industry as well so there's a whole lot of open skies in the manner of speaking for the administration in, in in Ethiopia, opening up the biggest economy in the Horn of Africa to international investors. Let's see how it goes. Safaricom shareholders approved 25 billion final gross dividend, which is expected to be paid in August. Kenya's green economy could create nearly 240,000 jobs, according to latest data. Tanzania uh, just test running the new standard gauge rail line between Dar es Salaam and, of course, uh, the, the Dodoma, which is a free ride for about 900, nearly a thousand people. It's part of opening up rail transportation in the East African community. Under President Samir Saluhu Hassan in Rwanda, Skull Brew is, says it's unveiled a new product. It's called Maltona. It's a 0.0% alcohol malted beverage. If you've tasted it and you've seen it, let me know. Check up my uh, Twitter handle or X handle at B. Bolson. Let me know, just give me an idea of how that really tests in Rwanda. So let's get on and move on to West Africa. Of course, Nigeria is in everybody's cross edge right now. Markets are on edge. Jitters as Nigeria enters the planned national protest the 1st of August. There have been calls left, right and center, some from the private sector, others from government agencies. Why these plans uh, uh, no to bad governance hashtag should be shelved and what have you. The latest was the CPP, the Center for Promotion of Private Enterprise, overnight issued a statement that was on Sunday uh, which says that you should make the protest peaceful, the police should provide uh, protection and ensure that the protest organizers should organize in such a manner that it's not hijacked to loot stores and shops and what have you and businesses and uh, no one gets hurt in the process. And of course, that's it. And said, of course, the protest should just be for just one day and should not be allowed to drag on indefinitely. Libya has denied deal 
uh, are denied that there's a deal or agreement to supply crude oil as a feedstock to the Dangote refinery. There was a media report all over the place last week that Libya's national oil company, the NOC, is planning to supply crude oil to Nigeria's uh, a private uh, refinery, the Dangote refinery, sitting here in Lagos. Production costs of 118 percent plus uh, dented Dangote cement uh, first half profits uh, to about 189 billion in local currency. You can read up the details of how much uh, the cost of doing business is impacting businesses in Nigeria and with an iconic brand such as Dangote cement operating here and more than a dozen African countries. The House of Representatives in Nigeria has passed the new shipping and pot Regulate economic and regulatory uh, agency bill. You can read up the details on that. In the meantime, gold exports is uh, lifting Ghana straight surplus by 12.5% in the first half of January. To do part of the details contained in the media budget review presented last week by Dr. Mohammed Adam, the country's minister of finance. Let's take you to Southern. Uh, Africa and grab a couple of headlines for you to start the new week. The government uh, in South Africa, now President Raposa, signed a new the amendment to the Companies Act in the country, uh, asking that an average plus median total package of all employees should be disclosed moving forward. Zimbabwe's total debt uh, was about $20.5 billion that the government uh, uh, resorting to local borrowing to contain its exposure to the current foreign currency volatility, which making deaths become very unsustainable for the Southern African economy. And Standard Bank in South Africa is uh, backing the African Union Peace Fund with about 18 million rand, that's roughly $1 million, that before every year over the next five years. It's a donation, by the way. Forget geopolitics, political differences between Pretoria and Washington. South Africa is likely to maintain positive trade uh, 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 role with the United States based on ongoing negotiations. And that's what I was getting it this morning. Let's finish off in North Africa and quite a couple of uh, news that could uh, uh, make you look at uh, the, the, the things, take a second look at what's going on. Tunisia uh, is sending humanitarian uh, aid to uh, a boat to, uh, the, to Gaza. So it's what about 12 million uh, Tunisian diners. That's the latest news. And that is coming through as the boat is now uh, 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 docked in, in Egypt, uh, one of the Egyptian ports has its way, uh, for onward trans, uh, uh, uh transmission, uh, transportation to, to Gaza. Egypt and Indorama Ventures are in talks, according to the Office of the Energy Minister, discussing fertilizer plant progress, where Morocco is looking at an economic growth of 4.5% for last year, according to the Finance Minister. And finally, Sodik in Egypt, which is into hospitality and leisure business, says his, uh, uh, first half of first quarter, uh, earnings showed a net profit of 87% growth. Uh, revenue jumped 35%. Growth sales was also better by 34%. And those are your headlines this Monday, the 29th of July. I am boasting them of you to have a great day and I'll be back with you soon tomorrow with a fresh edition of your Frontier Opening Bell. <laughs>